I wish you a very good morning. I would like to welcome you today to our PolyChat Advanced Materials Webinar. My name is Edith Gutmann. I'm working as EMEA Training Specialist within the Sales Organization um, and will be the host of this webinar. Our presenter today is Mr. Michael Anton, Materials Business Manager EMEA. Before I'm handing over to him, I would like to give you some general information. As you might have noticed already, you are all in listen-only mode at the moment. In case that you have any questions during the webinar, you can type in your message in the question field and we will have a short break after each chapter where I will read the question and ask Michael to answer them. At the end of the webinar, we will also have a short, uh, some time for a Q&A session. If you use then the raise hand function, I will unmute you so that you can place your um, question yourself. This webinar is being recorded and we will publish it later on our partner training portal, Train Me on 3D. Should you have any colleagues who are not able to attend today, please feel free to tell them about the recorded version. And now I wish you an interesting webinar and we'll pass on to our speaker, Michael. Welcome, Michael. A wonderful good morning. This is Michael Anton. Um, as usual, today we want to have a, a webinar about uh, our PolyJet materials and a warm welcome from my side and many thanks for attending. Um, as you can see in the agenda, we have uh, three major sections uh, talking about rigor and digital materials talking about Vero Clear and Digital ABS in the second and third session. And at the end, as um, uh, Edith uh, mentioned, we have a question and answer session where we try to answer your questions. And in between, we will give you a bit time to uh, have your questions and I try your and I try to answer it. So let's start today. Um, as mentioned, uh, let's start with Rigor and its digital materials. So this uh, graph you see uh, is the PolyJet and FTM material mapping. A few of you, or the most of you, maybe know this already. And if you and you can see here Rigor uh, in the middle of the um, of the of the PolyJet materials, this blue circles uh, with um, was a mapping of the HTT and the impact strengths uh, in comparison to the other polyjet materials and in comparison with the old, uh, with the with the FDM materials. So um, let's talk about uh, Rigor. The um, um, order number is RGD 450, and um, talk about its properties. Um, very important, Rigor is simulating polypropylene. It is no, of course not, no polypropylene material, but as all um, polyjet materials, it's simulating um, and, and specific plastic. And here we're simulating polypropylene material. The color is white and uh, Rigor is showing an, an enhanced toughness with a with an higher impact or isot impact and an elongation at break between 20 and 35 percent. And a temperature resistance, what we call HDT, of um, 49 to 54 degrees C. Rigo shows us a very good dimensional stability and the great surface quality. Important, Rigo is running on of the Object 30 Pro Prime series, on all the Eden V family, on the Legacy Connex family, and all the Connex family, and of the Object 1000. At the moment, Rigo is not running on J750. This will come in next year, I guess. So here you can see um, a nice uh, pictures of a typical um, applications. Rigo is uh, well known for for caps and all flexible parts. Um, you can you can print. So um, Rigo is ideal for a final product visualization, 
for moving parts and assemblies, for exhibition, sales and marketing models, uh, for an assembling of electronic components, and the other wide range of fit testing, snap fit applications and living images. Yeah, another two, two pictures to see um, typical applications for Rigor. Again, um, a uh, little bit closer application mapping and the comparison between our Vero materials, the new Rigor we talk about, Durus, and digital ABS. As you can see, in the, in the um, temperature uh, range, uh, Rigor is above Vero and of course above Durus material. Yeah? And uh, in the toughness, Rigor is located between Vero and Durus uh, material. Sorry, it's one, one uh, picture missing. So, um, the next one, I want to introduce you some interesting pictures and case studies. And uh, the, the one we have here is a printed frame of a, of a, of a model airplane. Um, and the, the, the frame printed complete in Rigo material and covered with a transparent foil to have it light and stable and uh, to keep it flying. Yeah, some closer um, detailed pictures. You can see here is a very thin and fragile structure, but strong enough to keep uh, the uh, flight dynamics and and all the um, the stress and load coming on an on the construction when it flies. Uh, some um, other um, picture from the from the uh, rear tail and uh, some numbers and pictures of the printed parts. And here you see a comparison between Vero White, Durus, uh, AB, Digital ABS and Rigor um, on um, a specific uh, um, uh, properties like HTT, impact resistance and break. And especially the elongation at break, Rigor is very close to Digital ABS, not not completely in the range of Duros, because Duros is a very, very um, soft material and a high elongation at break, uh, but this is a good compromise. Also the impact resistance, it's above our uh, Vero materials, but below Duros and digital ABS. And the HTT is a good compromise in the middle, it's above Vero materials, above Duros of course, but uh, still below about uh, digital ABS. So what is important uh, to handle Duro's um, uh, Rigo material uh, while printing? And that's why the next uh, few slides talking about the um, printing recommendation and some tips. Um, to generate quality parts, what is necessary? Um, at third, point number first, prepare the tray uh, for model with a high aspect ratio, means between X and Y. Um, whenever possible, please uh, position the part along the Y axis. Um, this uh, reduces uh, the stress and uh, possible, um, possible deformations, but uh, normally this is, this is not so much. Um, the um, second point is, uh, it talks about remove the support material. After printing, of course, remove support from the parts. And here, very, very, very important, keep water as much as you can away from Rigor parts. Uh, it means uh, the water jet treatment, uh, please keep it to a minimum and uh, a special or a dedicated parts um, with uh, special care. Uh, also, the time in the caustic soda, um, in my recommendation is uh, 20 minutes, half an hour, um, because Rigor is absorbing water and it doesn't give it away while drying out the parts. It means if a part is absorbs water and then you have deformation. So, very, very important, keep, please keep the time 
the vigor parts come in contact with water as short as possible. Yeah, it's much more recommended to remove as much as you can of the support manually. Go to the water jet for a few minutes. Don't leave the part in the water jet as, as um, longer than, than needed. Take it out, blow it, uh, dry the parts uh, if uh, possible uh, with shop air. Um, check the parts if you, if you need caustic soda. Put it into a stronger caustic soda bath for maybe uh, 20 minutes, half an hour. Take the parts out. Uh, go to the to water jet again for one minute to wash away uh, the residues of, um, of uh, support material. And then, important, dry the parts and put it on the shelf life, uh, on the shelf for drying out these parts. So this is very important. If, you, if you're following these this easy rules, um, you will have uh, great parts uh, with uh, Rigo material. Um, yeah, this is this is um, another explanation. Use uh, the air blower to remove excess water. Place the parts on a dry surface or drying rack. Um, sure, position the parts so that they dry effectively and um, do not deform, like in the picture below. And um, clean the print heads. Of course, this is recommended after each job, whatever you, whatever material you use. So, next picture is talking about um, Rigo material and the digital materials uh, using Rigo and its mechanical properties. As you already know, and Rigo is following the same rule, you can um, print wonderful uh, digital material parts by using uh, rigor as primary or <coughs> sorry secondary material um, in combination with Tango Black Plus and Tango Plus. Yeah, you see um, here there's 12 additional digital materials between the native R uh, RGD450, what is rigor and Tango Black Plus with Shore 27. You have four rigid, or six, sorry, uh, six rigid digital materials, and we can produce six flexible digital materials um, out of these two materials. The next um, slide shows you the same behavior but in combination between Rigor and Tango Plus. Here, um, because we have a doubling of um, properties, we uh, create only two rigid digital materials, and, uh, but we keep this six flexible uh, DMs in the shore between 40, 50, 60, 70, 85, and 95, as usual. So we have not, not the complete 12 DMs, only two rigid and six flexibles. So the next one is talking about a few um, case studies. Uh, this one is a European customer, is doing consumer goods, and uh, the requirement is um, uh, usage for fixtures, clips, and walls. Um, the material previously used were Duros and Vero, but the customer feedback wasn't so good because, you know, Duros is a, is a very low temp material um, and starts deforming uh, very easily um, when, when come into the warm environments. And sometimes Vero parts are a little bit brittle and uh, clip functions um, are not um, working uh, that nice. So um, we have some some, uh, some some replacements here, and here you can see another um, nice case study. Um, the challenge is to create parts with clips as well that not break and uh, drill um, and, and drilling holes without cracks and have thin walls without deformations and. The pictures here show you a wonderful combination of a massive uh, body printed from uh, Rigor, and you see the side caps 
are uh, produced from Vero Clear, and this is uh, assembled with screws and washers, um, as you can see here, normal metal screws and nuts, and this works very well. Um, the picture right of this shows in detail um, a little bit uh, the ledges and the clip functions and the symbols, and all this is running perfect. Uh, with uh, rigor when you, of course, um, taking care about the print direction. So in every case, whenever possible, these ledges and clips and whatever you should print in, an, uh, in the X and Y um, area and not along Z. This uh, gives an extra flexibility um, and then you have an, a very good and successful parts. So the next story is uh, or comes from Nidec. Um, Nidec is a uh, technology customer who is specialized in the research, development, and production of high technology diagnostic instruments and um, informatic systems. Um, you can see here um, this is a complete system um, for diagnostic uh, the human eyes. And um, the next one is uh, tell them the story. Uh, they printed uh, different parts of this complete whole assembly uh, between Rigor and Tango Black Plus, and uh, this uh, for the for the prototypes, and um, um, having a, a a great success here because uh, during during the development of this um, product. So um, this is the wonderful time to make a um, first uh, stop uh, before we come to Vero Clear. And uh, Edith, do you have some questions at the moment? Uh, yes, only uh, one actually uh, about Rigor. Is Rigor the new name for Endure or what is the difference? Um, okay, this is a great question. Thank you. Um, to clarify, uh, Rigor is exactly a replacement. This is not a new material. Uh, we just changed the name from Endor. Um, there was a legal thing. Uh, we have to replace the name. Um, this is all what we can, what, what I can say about this. And there's no change in uh, properties. Rigor is the exact replacement for Endor material. So it is the same material at all. Thank you. This was the only question for the moment. Okay, then uh, we coming to the um, next sections and talk about Miro Clear um, with the with the number RGD eight hundred and ten. So uh, again, we have uh, this um, polygon and FDM mapping, as you already know, and you see Miro Clear is uh, a little bit left of of Rigor. And uh, in the same in the same area than all Vero families, um, in the temperature uh, about 50 degree, and uh, with an uh, impact strength of about 20, 20 uh, 25 joule per meter, um, and this makes it relatively brittle, relatively brittle. So um, talking about Vero Clear, um, starting with the properties, of course. Uh, like the name says, it's a color translucent material and we can achieve a true transparency. But of course, um, a, a, a true transparency for a simulation of uh, PMMA was plexiglass um, with a great dimensional stability. We have very durable parts with an excellent surface finish uh, and a great detail appearance. Um, Vero Clear is available on the Object 30 Pro and Prime in the whole Eden family and the Connex family. Um, yeah, the next page is uh, talking about some uh, very nice examples to use Vero Clear. This is ideal for form and fit testing uh, of uh, clear or see-through parts. Um, glass uh, eyewear, lighting covers, light cases, visualization of liquid flow, uh, uh, 
color dyeing and uh, medical applications and artistic and exhibition modeling. Um, of course, Meru Clear does not come out of the printer in this polished and um, completely transparent state. So we need to talk about how to make it and therefore we have some printing guidelines and both processes. Yeah, uh, let's start. Um, material replacement when changing or preparing the machine for, for, for printing with Vero Clear means um, when uh, um, changing to Vero Clear, it's a basic or ground rule to uh, perform in high, high performance or end economy um, material replacement uh, run uh, to achieve the best results. Yeah, cleaning all printer components, yeah, cleaning the heads, the wiper, uh, the, the waste collector very, very uh, thoroughly and make sure um, you don't have um, other particles of other colors um, uh, between, between the print heads and so on. That's, that's very important to avoid any contamination of your very clear part. Uh, printing preferences. Um, by default, by default, it's high speed and mud to reduce the UV exposure um, f during the print trial. Yeah? But if you have high detailed, very small and, and, and tiny parts, of course, it's, it's recommended to print um, in, in high quality. Uh, and of course, you can print also in in, in glossy mode, um, if matte mode doesn't help you here. Yeah? But you have to be aware, um, printing in glossy mode makes your parts a little bit more yellow tinted. Yeah? But um, after a bleaching process, uh, this yellow coloring is completely disappearing or disappeared and you have a wonderful result um, in your, in your uh, battle clear printed parts. Um, yeah, some, some words for the tray arrangement. Uh, when printing glossy parts, please make sure arrange them so um, they have a similar height to ensure they are not exposed uh, to uh, unnecessary UV radiation. What it means, it means if you have high parts in Z, yeah, please put your, um, your tall parts in one job and if you have um, smaller parts, flat parts, make a second job with flat parts to make sure the flat parts um, don't, don't expose uh, more than necessary uh, with the UV while printing the high parts in Z um, and finishing this job. So this is, this is very important um, to have uh, the, the parts um, as, as, um, as um, transparent as possible. Um, talk about photo bleaching. Um, in, the, in the beginning of AeroClear, what is in between uh, three years ago, um, a lot of customers and partners and also we figured out that the parts come out of the printer in the yellow tone. This, is, this, is, uh, um, this becomes from the exposure by UV light, uh, but in between we can work against this and we have a bleaching um, process and post-process, what we call bleaching, and we have two different ways. Um, at the beginning, there is an easy and cheap process. This is a box um, wrapped with aluminium foil or mirrors to table lamps and to uh, special light bulbs. Um, we, um, I explain it later. And um, this is a very low-cost process, uh, altogether maybe 100 euro maybe $200 or something, depends on which box and which table lamps you buy. Um, the light bulb is about 25 euro. Uh, this is a Philips uh, fluorescent light bulb with a very, very special color temperature of about 6,500 K. K stands for Kelvin. And um, uh, by, the, by the way, this is a very bright uh, light, uh, like a sunlight, and um, after 24 hours under this light, 
um, the um, barocleo printed parts um, become or losing losing their yellow tint, uh, the yellow coloring, and uh, getting uh, um, a very very clear and transparent. Um, and the second the second possibility, and this is recommended by when when you use um, very often ferroclear parts. If ferroclear is one of your major um, uh, materials, it's absolutely nice to have um, an, um, an, uh, uh, an illumination chamber. Yeah? The cost is about 1,200, uh, 1,300 US dollar. And, um, we have one of these chambers, this is made in China. Uh, in this in this case, one of the chambers you can see in our office in Rheinmünster in the benchmark area, um, and we're using this um, this illumination chamber for um, huge uh, for all uh, very clear parts um, to um, yeah to uh, bleach them and having them uh, fully transparent. Um, of course, this is a more expensive solution. Um, but both of them working well. Um, the effects of photo bleaching you can see in the next slide. Um, after six hours, um, the improvement is about 70%. After 24 hours, it's 90%. And over them, you have the minor uh, improvements, uh, but 90 95% clarity um, and non yellow tint anymore. Um, comes very close to an PMMA, um, what is fully transparent. Now you see here these three results. This is the yellow tint right um, off of the tray. It's um, slightly yellow. Um, the, um, the cheaper solution with the table lamps gives you a 90% clarity and the photo bleaching in the chamber gives you a 95% clarity after 24 hours. Yeah. Okay, uh, the next point, what, um, what we see is that um, uh, is, the, is the polishing of VeroClear. Of course, um, VeroClear parts of the tray are a little bit milky uh, because of the layers. Yeah? This is one of the major um, things of the, of the, of the complete uh, printing process. We printing in layers. Um, if you have layers, you have refraction of light, and this gives us not a complete polished and transparent um, uh, view. That's why we have to polish our very clear parts. Yeah, um, is it, is it, you, you can achieve a great smooth and clear surface uh, by sanding it, of course. Yeah, uh, then it has to be done mostly uh, when transparent, complete, transparent and optical clear parts um, are required um, and um, their polishing makes them truly clear um, up to a reality and typically um, a lacquering uh, can help you as an additional uh, process before or after the uh, polishing um, um, process and uh, the, the picture right of you or uh, right in the in the in the in the in the page show you um, an, a lens um, after the uh, bleaching process. You see the the yellow tint is um, almost uh, gone, and you have only the uh, a milky transparent um, uh, view. And after a polishing process, um, you can you can achieve an optical clear an optical clear part. Uh, also for lenses and, and other optical parts, it's absolutely um, okay. You know, just to give you some some ideas, and the next uh, slide talks about how to polish. Yeah, sure. Um, thoroughly clean the printed model using the water jet and remove all um, support um, residues. Um, dry sand surface is the next point, so to remove all the lines and steps um, you can you can use um, um, a, a scent, a center models with a 200, 240, uh, then go to 300, uh, whatever is there, 320 is a typical grid 
um, up to 400 for 50 something um, and repeat this process until the uh, printing lines, the, the layer lines are all done. And then start um, after 400 up to 1000 grit, start with wet sanding. So this is a, this is a process. Um, sure, if you have never done this, um, you'd have to do it carefully to don't uh, destroy the parts and don't break away some, some uh, small details or, or um, edges. Um, but if you, if you use it carefully, after 1000 grit sanding for a while, uh, you have a nice, very smooth surface. So here, this is the state, um, if you lacquer this part um, two or three times with a very, very thin uh, layer of lacquer, um, the parts uh, are showing a, a nice and wonderful transparency. Uh, but of course, you have a lacquer on top. So if you, if you don't want to have a lacquer, or don't need it, yeah, uh, you can start with a micro mesh sanding. Um, this is for an exceptional finishing, uh, polish the model with the micro mesh uh, sandpaper. Um, we're using this foam pads uh, with a grid size of one and a half thousand um, up to uh, three point, uh, three thousand six hundred up to four thousand grit. Uh, and do this, please, with soapy water. Yeah? Uh, almost doing this wet and uh, put some soap inside. Um, this gives a wonderful polishing um, result here uh, for your printed parts. So, of course, then you can continue and polishing the parts with a buffing wheel, or you can use a car polishing set with, the, with this uh, origin paste. Um, and um, yeah, the pictures here on the table show you what you can achieve um, while polishing metal clear parts. Um, absolutely, absolutely important. Have to be aware that you lose between a tenth um, and two and a half, three tenths, depends on um, the the shape of the parts. Because if you're sanding the part, um, you're losing surface. Yeah. Uh, please be aware that you, your parts getting thinner. So if you know that you have to polish your parts, please add um, two, two tenths of a millimeter around the parts, and you have to polish this um, two tenths, 0 0.2 millimeters away. Now, yeah? just to make sure the result, the resulting part is still in your dimensional specs. Okay, come we we come to the next point. This is dyeing and lacquering. Yeah? Painted model can greatly enhance their impact, but it also makes them opaque. Uh, dyeing adds a color. This is dye coloring, um, and, and uh, it's a lot of life to your uh, printed models while retaining the translucency. Um, this is a nice nice picture. This is faster and easy to make. And now my here we come to the to the pictures. Um, it is it is an absolute easy process. Uh, you can use a laser color. Um, mostly we use in RIT R I T. This is an international brand. Uh, you can buy. Um, via Amazon or in your local uh, distribution line um, using um, a canister, a glass, a glass cylinder, you can mixing your colors. Uh, RIT is a powder. Here you see this is a liquid uh, dye color. Um, with, you, can, you can mix different colors uh, so you can achieve more or less any needed um, shade of, 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 uh, of your color and um, yeah pour it uh, with uh, cooked, cooked water and then bring the parts on an, on an hook or on an, on an, um, in the, into the water and then it's a question of time um, to have a, a, a light red uh, to, to, uh, to have this example here um, or a darker one or a middle 
um, intensity of color. This is a question of how long you you keep the parts into the warm water or the hot water. Yeah, it should be hot, but not cooking anymore. Um, important is um, after the having the parts uh, in the in the warm or hot water, please uh, wash them away with uh, cool water, with cold tap water, um, and then of course um, you have to be aware that. Uh, Due to the um, um, uh, to the porosity of, of our parts, uh, there is a little bit of porosity, of course. Uh, the color is going into the parts for about uh, 0 0.2 millimeters, uh, something like that. So if you start polishing the part after the dye coloring, yeah, you polishing away this um, color. Uh, what what might have wonderful effects if you know that and if you're following that, or you have to dye coloring your parts again after the polishing effect. So what it makes sense? It makes sense if you want to have polished and uh, dye colored parts. So color or um, I mean um, uh, polish your parts at first and then starting a dye coloring. Of course, you should not use any lacquer here to make the parts easier uh, transparent because uh, a lacquer is closing to porosity and uh, you will have no effect with a dye coloring. So yeah, this is something you need to be, you need to know just. Okay, the next one, uh, coming to uh, Vero Clear and DM parts for Connex uh, 2 and 3. And here we're talking about um, rigid, transparent, and rubber-like DMs um, between Tango Black Plus and Vero Clear, uh, or Tango Plus and Vero Clear. Uh, both giving us 20 um, uh, digital materials um, in rigid and um, um, tran in rigid and uh, flexible um, DMs. Yeah, you have here, you see Vero Clear as a pure material, Tango Black Plus as the pure material, and in between you have this smoky, transparent, um, rigid parts, and then you have flexible parts uh, because of, of the Tango Black Plus. They are all um, mostly black, or very, very deep black. Huh? in the same shore values you already know. Um, if you use uh, Vero Clear and um, if you use Vero Clear and, um, and uh, um, Tango Plus, um, you can print this kind of uh, DM parts. Um, this is a human body part uh, and hard valve. Um, you see on the top you have a massive uh, layer of Vero Clear, and uh, in between the wolf part, um, it's it's a mixture, it's a DM of uh, Vero Clear and um, um, uh, Tango Plus material. Yeah, this is another another picture of that. Yeah, also a very nice uh, picture is the sleeve with a Shore 60 digital material. Yeah, this is very nice to have. Um, the, the flange parts here at the end of the of the of the of the sleeve, you you, you can you can make them a little bit harder, yeah, to make it easier to connect them with uh, other tubes and pipes, um, and the sleeve part themselves you can do a little bit softer to have a better flexibility. Um, with uh, you can do um, wonderful things here uh, with uh, using the uh, software, uh, maybe Magix or whatever you want, or directly out of the cut. Okay, um, another nice uh, idea is printing a shower head, um, like here from uh, EDL Standard shown, um, a customer of Germany. Um, this, um, the handle, you can see the handle is printed in clear with this smoky black um, uh, translucent uh, color. Um, the shower head themselves um, is, is clear and the, um, 
the rubber plate with all the small um, jet holes is made uh, between Tango Black Plus and Beru Clear in a, in a Shore 85. Um, to have an, a defined uh, holes and uh, jets for the water um, to to make this model uh, completely working for a while. Um, another very nice pictures um, um, for for gasket seals and O-rings uh, like this box with an imprinted seal or this uh, cap. Uh, I add some descriptions. Yeah, like this bottle cap with an imprinted O-ring of Shore 70, uh, this lens seal with the Shore 60, or this box, you have an, an hinge, uh, you have the gasket, um, and um, yeah, this is parts you can do all with these combinations of clear and um, Tango Plus or Tango Black Plus. Okay, this was section number two, and uh, another question to edit um, of more um, questions. So we have one uh, question about slide 37. Um, René is asking which materials were used um, for those uh, flexible parts. Uh, 37, so let me step back on page 37. Uh, this is 36. Yeah, this is this is 37. Um, this is Vero Clear and Tango Plus. Uh, Vero Clear and uh, Tango Plus. Yes. Yeah. The um, the uh, the sleeve part is in Shore 60, and um, personally, I would I would use uh, in Shore 85 or 95 for the end for the end uh, uh, structures of the sleeve. But you, this is your own choice. Um, uh, depending on the on the usage of the sleeve. Thank you. You're welcome. No further questions. Okay, then then we starting into our last section uh, talking about digital ABS. Um, again, we starting with our mapping. Um, and please remember, yeah, we had Rigo and Vero um, left left of digital ABS. Uh, digital ABS uh, out of the printer um, is um, uh, located on an HTT um, of, a, of um, close to 70 degree, it's 68 degree, um, and with an uh, with an impact strength of about 70 joule per meter. This is the most tough, toughest polymer material we have at the moment. And um, of course, uh, above, after a post-curing process, this is a thermal post-curing, or this is a post-curing, it's, 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 po it's a tempering process, it's a post-treatment. There's no curing anymore. This is a treatment, the pre-aging of this material, um, the um, HTT, uh, is increased to uh, 90-95 degrees C. Um, yeah, what is digital ABS? Uh, digital ABS simulates a standard IBS plastics in combining um, high temperature resistance and toughness. So again, out of the printer, um, the uh, HTT is um, uh, about uh, in between 58 and 68 degree C, and after a thermal uh, um, um, post-treatment, um, we, can, we can increase it to 90 and I would say 95 degree C, uh, with an excellent impact resistance and shock absorption, um, and the superior finishes for smooth and uh, glossy surfaces. So again, what is digital ABS, how it's made, and here you see, um, um, maybe you have seen this with other materials as well, but here you see the two components of digital ABS. Um, you know, digital ABS, this is a, a two-component composite material, and um, you have this version of the material 531. This is the white. Um, here the points are black, but this material 
in 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 the in the normal state is is a, a white uh, close to white material as an as a uh, one material and as a a tough version this is RGD five one five this is the tough material component and together they producing um, the the ABS material the fifty one sixty so and at the other side. You have 535 and 515 is the same for the toughness and you create um, the ivory version and um, there's a mistake. The ivory version, yeah, this is, this is, this is, this is a rotation, sorry guys, um, this is wrong. This have to be 535 and on the right side have to be 531, um, but this is a, a minor thing, so please be aware these two materials have to be changed, but doesn't matter um, as long you know um, how does it work. Um, digital ABS applications. The, the major one is for simulate snap fit parts, including models and prototypes with moving parts and compositions. Uh, simulation of living hinges uh, is possible for clips and fasteners. Um, for high stress uh, or parts for high stress situations um, such as falls and blows or high pressure is withstands outdoor environments for a while uh, so hot and cold weather is okay um, this is uh, typically and um, of course simulate contact surfaces like knives uh, scissors and other cutting surfaces um, what you see in this page is um, the behavior um, of Sinwo parts. Um, this part here in the, in the um, right upper corner is uh, an easy plate with uh, walls becoming thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. And um, the origin version, this is 5160, um, is um, or, or gives us the, the um, uh, typical ABS properties only for wall thicknesses um, above above 1.2 1.3 millimeter. So below this uh, wall thickness, and the most of our parts we're printing today, yeah, for for boxes, for lids, for other parts, having a thinner wall thickness. Uh, but the first version. Um, was um, for, for thicker uh, wall thicknesses. Um, below this wall thickness with the origin version 5160, um, we lose a little bit the properties of the material and that's why we introduced um, a version 2. Um, what is 5161 in green or 5131 in ivory? So with, with this two, uh, we call it um, uh, version two materials or series two materials, um, we can go down up to 0 0.8 millimeters for wall thickness and still guarantee the properties in terms of toughness and temperature. Yeah? Um, here's another example uh, what describes exact um, the behavior of the old version, first generation, 5160. You see, so thinner our walls are, yeah, then we're losing the green component, uh, and the green component is giving us the toughness, uh, the temperature, and the, and the hardness. So we're losing the green uh, component, and the thin walls are very, very flexible, because only 515 is still there. So with the second generation of uh, digital ABS, and you see, um, or you you can you can this is marked by one at the end. So it's the same number, yeah, 5161 or 5131. This is a thin wall uh, version of this material. You see also the same thin walls below 1.3 millimeter. Um, still having a green or an ivory color, it means the um, the the, the uh, material is is there and doing the job. 
um, and we guarantee the temperature and the other mechanical properties down to 0 0.8 millimeter wall thickness. Okay, yeah, this is um, just digital AVS 2, what I explained, um, and this is the same um, um, uh, composition like the uh, generation 1 version, um, but we have a flexible um, uh, covering here um, to guarantee you the or to guarantee the mechanical and temperature properties. Um, this page uh, explains uh, very nice the four different um, material combinations we have. Yeah? Um, please note um, you have two um, ivory materials and we have two green materials. Yeah? Um, 5130 is the thick wall above 1.3 millimeter or above 1.2 millimeter um, side wall version and the ABS2 is the thin wall um, version is 5131 for thinner walls in ivory down to 0.8 and the same we have in green the version 5160 with the zero at the end is the thicker wall version and the uh, ABS2 in green for thinner walls um, is the 5161 version of this material. Okay, printing uh, recommendations and tips. Yeah, um, of course, the arrangement of the parts on the build tray affects the quality of the printed parts. This is a true thing. Um, and you have to be aware this is absolutely um, necessary to, make, uh, to, to follow here this um, printing recommendations. Um, matching surfaces, yeah? like this box, yeah? and this is working for all um, um, additive manufactured parts. Matching surfaces should be uh, placed in the same direction. Of, in the same direction. Yeah, um, the next point is internal stress um, may, uh, may cause a curve upwards parts um, and uh, to, to position uh, parts with a high XY uh, expect ratio um, as we um, know in, in uh, that of other materials, 5 to 5 or 450, yeah? please place them along Y axis yeah? to, to avoid any um, upwards curved surfaces. Um, yeah, okay, prefer printing uh, full trays for give uh, the parts uh, time to relax during printing um, is, is something um, sometimes is working, sometimes it's not, but sure, um, uh, longer, longer print time is, is better for the qualities. Um, drying parts. Uh, it's 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 very very important uh, as long the parts are wet and uh, coming out of the um, of the of the washing um, uh, system or the water jet or out of the uh, caustic soda bath. Um, make sure your parts can or your parts are um, uh, stored in the um, in the the shelf for, for drying out in the kind that we avoid any deformations. Yeah, I guess this picture number three explains at best how you should do that to avoid uh, uh, minimum uh, strains on the thin walls. Um, as, I, as, I, as I mentioned, we have a thermal treatment uh, post process here. Um, this is only necessary um, if you need this higher temperature. Yeah? If you don't need temperatures above 70 degrees, um, a thermal treatment is not necessary. Yeah? But if you need temperatures um, above 70 up to 95 degrees, um, you can put digital ABS and ABS2 parts in a programmable oven um, with a very defined uh, curve, uh, what gives us the next slides and um, uh, running a temper, a, post, uh, a thermal treatment, a temper process over one night and this is a pre-aging of the, of the internal structure and gives us the higher temperature. 
So this picture shows us the term treatment. Um, we have um, two different curves. For thin wall parts, um, this curve number one is uh, more than okay, uh, gives us a 90 degree um, HTT. And for thicker wall, for blocky parts, you can run the second um, curve with 1,000 time more and uh, in temperature increase up to 100, 100 degrees C um, for, um, for bigger parts. This curve takes uh, one or two hours longer, but um, if you do it overnight um, and the next morning the oven is cold and you can use your parts as expected. Um, at the end we're coming to some success stories of uh, digital ABS. Um, you can see here Track Bicycle is an US um, um, company who uh, was uh, producing and development uh, bicy bicycles and they use digital ABS for um, prototypes and first trying parts. As you can see here all the mechanical parts um, are printed in digital ABS and uh, running well. Um, another very nice and very free is this rollers uh, for a dishwasher. Now, um, if, if, this, if your um, rollers or wheels of the dishwasher are um, breaking, um, there's no way to buy new ones. Uh, you have to buy the whole basket, which gives you um, a lot of money and, and so on. But you can find or you can, cons you can, you can design um, on the easy way these new wheels, uh, print them in digital ABS, um, mount them on your dishwasher basket and go ahead um, under this, I would say, extreme conditions in the dishwasher. Um, another nice story is the street scooter story. You have already seen this car two and three years ago and our exhibition in Frankfurt. Um, why they use this printed parts, this is the, the whole um, chassis here is more or less printed for this first um, two cars uh, of uh, digital ABS green version. Um, this accelerated the product to market, um, eliminated uh, the non-value added labor uh, and shortened, shortened down um, the, the, the time to have these parts uh, ready. Um, and you can see after a lacquering um, and, and, and sanding uh, process, um, those parts are, are not, um, the, uh, looks the same than the origin automotive parts for this car. Um, talking in the next section about digital ABS, Ivory and Tango DMs. Um, here I need to say this is um, available, of course, um, um, only in in the white version of uh, digital ABS, uh, the ivory version. So we do not have DMs uh, from from digital ABS green um, because of the visual effects uh, when you mix green and black. Yeah? So at the moment um, we um, we use Tango Black Plus or Tango Plus uh, and digital ABS ivory uh, to having. Um, uh, 12 flexible DMs uh, in, uh, in, the, in different colors, of course. This is the black version and this is the uh, Tango Plus version uh, with the, the same mechanical properties but a complete different um, um, visualization. Uh, um, recommended system configuration. Um, uh, to, to come to a conclusion, um, this is a single material, yeah, Vero Clear. Um, dedicate your system to Vero Clear for all jobs uh, requiring transparency, PMMR or glass simulation, um, or for a general purpose uh, prototype. Paint Vero Clear in addition um, uh, to clarity, you, you have a very nice and superior um, dimensional stability. So the next one um, is um, just repeat a little bit about Rigor. 
It's also a general purpose material for prototyping needs. Um, dedicate your system to Rigo for all jobs requiring a superior dimensional stability along with a toughness, fine detail, extra smooth surface and or a non-specific opaque color. So, and in combination uh, with uh, Tango Black Plus, um, you can print um, a, a great range of Rigo and Tango Black Plus uh, parts for all general purpose opaque ridges or flexible prototypes. Here, with, with this combination about Rigor and Tango Black Plus, um, we can print squeeze bottles yeah? um, with, a, with a core cover combination, um, have, have a, something softer as a core and something a little bit harder in the outside, uh, the cover, you can really um, achieve an, an, an harder polypropylene uh, touchy uh, surface um, uh, like like a squeeze bottle. This is this is absolutely achievable. You can do it. Um, if you have questions, therefore, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, coming coming to um, uh, multi materials uh, systems like the Legacy Connex, um, use digital ABS. Um, this is RGD five one five and RGD. 535 or 515. Remember, 535 is the green version, 531 is the whiter version. Yeah? Uh, dedicate your system to digital ABS. Engineering material for all advanced functional prototypings. Um, and in combination with digital ABS and Tango Plus. Uh, use your system uh, between Digital ABS and Tango Black Plus or Tango Plus for all advanced functional prototypes um, on part text, seals, uh, gray shadings, over moldings and the various um, um, shore ranges. So now we are finished in our um, major part. And uh, we have a few minutes time for your questions, please. Edith? Yes, uh, we have some questions. So I'm starting from the top. Could you tell me the components of uh, RGD 515? So the components? 515, the components of, five, of 515. Mm -hmm. 515 is a material. This is a, this is the the the, uh, the the component we need for the toughness. Five one five gives us the tough component of digital ABS. So there is no components. Okay. Then um, we have another one. Does ABS two have better thermal mechanical? properties compared to ABS1, also for thicker walls? Um, in, in, in principles, uh, if you have thin, thin wall parts, uh, delicate parts, fine details, um, the version 2 digital ABS uh, works with a flexible covering um, or flexible um, um, yeah, covering of the parts. Um, you know, um, the, um, the digital ABS part is not an homogeneous part. Um, additional to the two components, we do we, we print a core cover 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 construction, and this cover 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 construction is flexible and is changing with the wall thickness. It means, of course. If you have thick wall parts, yeah, um, you can you can use version two as well. There's there's no problem. Um, but uh, uh, for thin wall parts, it's absolutely recommended to use version two uh, to have the same uh, mechanical properties. Um, by the way, recommendation for injection molding or blow molding parts, for instance, is using the version 1, the sick wall version, um, with, um, to, we have a better results there. 
Yeah? Uh, if you have some, some specific questions, uh, please send me just a mail. Um, we can discuss this offline. Uh, because I need to know uh, what is the what's the part and what is the sense of the part and so on. This is hard to say. Use this or use this. This is a little bit of experience. Um, yeah, this is. Hope this answers the question. Thank you. Then uh, we have from Pierre the question: When will uh, it be available? When will it be available the new ABS material? Um. Hard question. I don't know. We're working on something new, uh, for sure, but I don't know exactly when we commercialize this one. Uh, I'm waiting for that, yeah, but um, I have no no day today. Sorry. And is it possible to use it in Object Prime machine? Also no, Object here? Prime. Object Prime is a single material machine. And all digital materials are a dual, at least a dual uh, material uh, uh, combination. So all the object 30 series will never run uh, digital materials. Yeah, object serial is only for single material use, um, and digital materials needing more heads, yeah, at least uh, four. And um, as you know. Object 30 class only two heads, one for support and one for model. So this is impossible. Okay. Then we have a question from Mr. Becker in Germany, probably. Um, how much? How expensive was the production of the ABS uh, part uh, for the scooter? I don't know this number. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This is a uh, kilo wise. Yeah. We, we, we printed a lot of kilos and uh, with, an, with an object 1000. Um, so this is huge parts uh, and uh, a lot of material. Uh, so a few hundred kilos, of course, all over for, for two models. Yeah? Okay. Uh, again, uh, the question from Rachel who asked about the component of RGD, but she's asking now more precise, what is the chemical composition of RGD 505. Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, this we don't distribute. <laughs> yeah, um, if you if you need some information, please check the SDS. Yeah, in the SDS, uh, you see all necessary uh, informations about this material. Um, but sorry, um, we don't distribute our recipes here. And then we have uh, from uh, Olya a question about the PowerPoint, whether it will be distributed afterwards. So I will check with our marketing department. Normally, at least we place it on train mules ready for our resellers. And I will check with the marketing whether they will send it out. Do you know by chance, Michael? Uh, I don't know. Again, can you? I will. Uh, if we are sending after the presentation the webinar and the PowerPoint files to or yeah, sure we can do it. I mean, we, we, we can we can distribute the PDF. This makes it easier. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's no problem to send you the PDF uh, after that. Yeah, send us a mail um, and uh, we can share that. Of course. Okay. Um, another one, ABS two will be available for Connex two two sixty. It is. It is. So the uh, the ABS versions are running on uh, on Connex Two and Connex Three, of course. So they are already available. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then Nika is asking also uh, one question about uh, quest questioning case of combining Rigor instead of Durus with high temp. Would uh, we get even better digital ABS? Um, this depends. This depends on yeah, uh, on the on the part of application. Personally, I I love I love this combination of Rigor and uh, Tango Black Plus, yeah, because I can really do some really polypropylene parts, yeah. But of course, you have to work with core cover constructions. You need magics or a clever CAD designer to do that directly. Um, we can discuss it offline. Um, it will, yeah, this is, depends on the needs, yeah. 
um, for some reasons, uh, digital ABS uh, in combination with, with Tango Black Plus is okay. Uh, but if you have an, an Eagle Connex, um, uh, Rigor and uh, Tango Black Plus is a wonderful combination for catch to most of the parts. Okay, um, let me check. Um, yes, about the recorded version of the webinar when it be available on uh, the portal. So on the partner training portal, it will be available probably. It takes, it takes a week or something. Um, yeah. Yeah. It takes a week to, to bring the on the page. Yeah. So maximum. So probably even shorter, but maximum one week. Mm -hmm. um, yes. That's uh, actually it for the moment with written questions. I think we had also at this moment the time for the Q&A session. So if you want to place any question live also, do we have some more minutes, Michael? Sure. So sure. if anybody, if anybody wants, I have a raised hand from, from Georgia. I will mute you. I'm not sure if this question uh, Georgia, uh, hi. Uh, this question may may have been solved already before. I think you wrote us also, but um, if you have anything else, you could raise it now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's uh, it's fine. It is okay. It's, uh, yeah, I I just asked you that question because uh, we are using ABS uh, one, the normal um, version, for uh, injection molding. So I wanted to know if uh, ABS2 will be better for this application or well, not. Now stay with, stay with the version 1 uh, because of the outer, the outer cover uh, layer uh, is uh, 515 complete and uh, this is a great idea uh, to, to have uh, the, uh, the, the thick wall version, the uh, 5060 and uh, the 5160 or 5130 for injection molding. Let's just uh, keep it going. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, Giorgio. I will uh, mute you again. So any, um, any further questions? Please raise the hand now. So it looks like we answered, uh, or you answered most of the questions. If there are still um, questions afterwards, um, you can send us an email. Um, about the presentation, I was uh, typing in the address, channelmeastrategist.com, otherwise you can contact Michael directly for, 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 for the technical questions. Ah, um, I have one more written question. What uh, is the exact value? Okay, at photo bleaching. The exact value? What was yeah. value? Values uh, k in, in between brackets is ah, k. It's uh, 1500 k and 40 watts. So this light bulb is 40 watt fluorescent uh, light bulb. We using Philips with a, with a, with a, with a temperature color of 6500 k. If you want, drop us a mail. Uh, I have a, a page you can with an order number, uh, but this is the standard uh, we can do. No problem. Thank you. So, um, looks like this was uh, it on questions. I don't see any more questions and no more hands. Okay, so we can, uh, I will say many thanks for all attendees to, uh, to uh, be with us uh, for more than one hour. Um, it's uh, appreciate to, to have you there and if you have any questions regarding materials, applications, uh, please uh, drop directly or come to the sales support uh, the EMEA team and uh, asking questions. Um, yeah, we will do our best to uh, to have you printing wonderful parts. Thank you very much. And also from my side, thank you for your participation and valuable questions. Um, you will receive now a short feedback form. We would be very happy if you would take one more minute's time to answer these few questions.
because this will help us improve every time. Um, otherwise, I wish you also a very good day ahead, and uh, I will end the webinar now. Thank you again for your participation. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.